everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and I make lifestyle and beauty videos. For this video, I'm gonna do a little tutorial on this look right here. I call it an everyday look because I wear it every day. And the real point of the video is to show people who are just starting out with makeup or maybe just starting in a certain area of makeup how I do mine and hopefully that will be helpful. Now keep in mind, I am not a professional. I haven't taken any classes on makeup. I have just watched YouTube videos and learned about makeup from YouTube. So I know there's probably better ways to do things, but this is how I do it and how I found has worked for me. So if you're interested to see my tips and how I got this look, then just keep on watching. So starting with nothing on my face at all, hello, breakouts, blemishes, I am going to use the CeraVe moisturizer. And I think it's really important to moisturize your face before you put your makeup on because if your skin is more moisturized, then your makeup's going to go on easier and it's going to look better as you put your makeup on. Now that that's set for a little bit, what I'm going to do is put on a primer. It's a good base for your makeup to make it last longer and today I'll use the Milani Prime Perfection Face Primer. This one is hydrating and pore minimizing and I find it's been a good primer for me because on my nose I have larger pores so it's harder for me to get my makeup to stay long throughout the day. So this is a good primer um, for me with larger pores on my nose. Next I'm going to apply my foundation and you can do your makeup in whatever order you want, that whatever works best for you, but this is the order that I go in. A lot of people like to do the eyeshadow first so that they don't mess up any of the concealer or foundation that they've put on their face, but I find if I do it, my eyeshadow first and then I do my foundation, then my eyeshadow gets smudged or covered up just because I'm kind of messy like that. Today I'm gonna use L'Oreal True Match for my foundation in the shade N2, kind of. So I like to mix my shades and I forgot <laughs> that I was in a rush one day and I ended up just mixing the shades in the bottle so I poured a darker color into the N2 to find a better shade match for my face and so this isn't exactly N2. To apply my foundation today I'm going to use the Real Techniques sponge and a lot of people have heard and raved about this. I love this product. I haven't tried a beauty blender yet so I can't compare it but I think this is a great product for the price and you can also buy the four pack and save a couple of bucks there. I like to buy mine at Kohl's when I get a $5 off coupon and so they're really cheap that way. And then I can replace it every, I think it, they last me three to four weeks and not feel guilty about spending too much money or breaking the budget or anything on a beauty blender, which I'm sure those are great, but it's nice when you're into makeup and you're buying and replacing things often to have something that's a little bit more affordable. Now with most beauty sponges that you use, you do want to get them wet before you put your foundation on and I will insert a clip of do me doing that because you want to get it wet but then you also want to make sure you wring it out enough and so I'll do it 5, 10, 15, 20 times depending if it's a new blender. I've heard a few recommendations now to get your sponge wet before you do your makeup and also wash it right after and since I've been doing that I've been finding that they last a bit longer. Okay, this next part's not going to be as pretty, but I will just put a little bit on my hand and put onto my face. A couple spots all over my face. And I like the True Match foundation because it's very blendable and easily buildable. So for me, I have breakouts here and I'm going to be able to build up my foundation and know that it won't look cakey. So just to explain what I'm doing, I have the foundation on my face and then I'm going to press very lightly and just bounce the sponge on my skin. And it's okay if you need to add more product, it's better to start light than to go in with a heavy hand and have too much and have to restart. And you could also easily make yourself look cakey if you have too much makeup on your face. Now I'm going to go in with a concealer. I like the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer and I'm just going to put some under my under eyes and blend that out again with my blender. Now 
Next, I'm gonna set everything with a translucent face powder. I'm gonna pick the Milani one, and I'm going to take my Real Techniques, I think it's a concealer brush, looks like this, and I'm just going to get a little bit of product and pat that in under my eyes, um, and then use another brush to do my face. Now I'll take a powder brush. I just picked up the one from Wet n Wild and go ahead and just do a little bit of product, tap it off, and then apply that very lightly to the rest of my face. I want to add just a little bit of blush. So today I will use Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. I'm going to use my Real Techniques blush brush. Another option would be, I think this is, yes, this is the e.l.f. blush brush. You can use this brush um, as well. I think I like the Real Techniques one a little better, so we'll go in with that. So just taking a little bit of product, I'm going to lightly apply that to my cheekbones. That looked like a whole lot more than a little. This next step you don't have to do, but I'm gonna add a little bit of highlighter. I picked up the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. I heard this is a good one from the drugstore. And then I have an e.l.f. Small Stipple Brush. This is a really good one to just apply a little bit of highlight. And this product takes a little bit of building up if you want more of a shine. It's very soft. Usually at some point throughout doing my makeup, I'll try and add a lip balm, and this is the Nivea Moisture Lip Care. And I'll do that so that by the time I put on my lipstick, my lips have some moisture to them. Kind of like putting moisture on before you put your makeup on. Now onto the fun part, the eyeshadow. Today I'm gonna use the NYX Ultimate Shadow Palette. And I searched high and low and tried almost every single eyeshadow in the drugstore and I decided this is my favorite. There are a few other options that I do like from the drugstore, and I mentioned them in the video I did right before this one where I went through all the products and talked about them just a little bit more. So I'll put that up in the cards. It's right here, I think. I'll put that up in the cards, and you can take a look at that video too and see what products I recommend. The look I'm going for is kind of an everyday look that is good for beginners because when you first start out, you don't wanna go crazy with bright bold colors you just want to keep it simple so I'm just going to use some of the lighter colors and then maybe a touch of the darker ones for the first step I'm going to cover my lid with this first shade here and I'm going to do that because it's going to be the closest to my skin color and since I put the primer on I'm going to want to put a powder over it to set it and to make everything more easily blendable so just take a light tap of that on both eyes Oh, and I am using the Sonia Kashuk Blending Brush. I love this brush. I've gotten a few of my friends to buy this one. The other options you could use, the e.l.f. Blending Brush is a really actually interesting brush because it's flat. Normally the blending brushes are very round and fluffy. This one's flat and fluffy. And at first I thought that's never gonna work. That doesn't make sense for a full blending brush, but it actually does work because depending how you hold it, it changes the angle and that might help blend your eyeshadow better in different parts of your eyes. Another option is the Wet n Wild blending brush too. And these are all anywhere from a dollar to three or four dollars. And it's really important to have a good blending brush. So if you can afford to pay for a more expensive one or buy one online from Morphe or Makeup Geek, that is where I would spend my money is on a good blending brush. So I'm gonna go in with this third color here. It's just a very soft matte um, neutral. I'm gonna take my brush, hold it at the end, and I'm gonna put this in my crease. I'm gonna try not to get it on my lid, and then I'm just gonna use windshield wiper motions and blend it in. So 
you can't really see that. So I'm gonna go a little darker and I'm gonna pick this color right here. Next, I'm gonna take a lighter color and put that on the inner half of my eyelid. I'm gonna take a flat brush. This one's from Sonia Kashuk. And I'm going to get some product and tap it off. And then I'm going to set it on my eyelid and kind of pull very gently. Do everything very soft because the skin is so sensitive around your eyes, especially, well, all over your face, but eyes especially, that you wanna take good care and not press too hard or pull your skin too much. Next, I'm gonna dabble a little with the darker colors and I'm gonna go into this color right here. It's a really pretty brown reddish color. And I'm going to take the e.l.f. eye crease brush. It's very small and I'm going to hold it closer to the end and I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time in the outer V of my eye and then I'll go in and blend that. So as you can tell right now, it really does need blended out. And what I like to do with darker colors is pick a darker haired brush. That way I'm not bouncing back and forth between brushes that have lighter colors and darker colors. And it would suck if I was going for a lighter look and I picked up a brush that I had forgotten to clean and had darker color on it. And this way I just know which one to pick up and I'll be safe. Not putting any product on it. I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that in a little bit. Again, depending how much control you want, you can hold your brush closer to the end or farther, you can do both. Sometimes that helps with blending is just to do a little bit of each. If you want your eyeshadow to be blended well, you have to take time and you have to have patience. I'm just saying. Now, because I want all the colors to blend together well, I'm gonna go back into this color here and I'm gonna take my fluffy blending brush from Sonia Kashuk and I'm going to go back over the crease and maybe cover up any of the lines that I created on accident with the darker color and just blend all of the colors together. Sometimes I will take the highlighter that I use on my face and I will put it above my cheekbones, but I'll also put it under my eyebrow and I feel like that makes the look come together even more in the end. So that's something you could do too. Next, let's do some eyeliner. And normally I'd reach for the Kat Von D Tattoo Eyeliner. That is my ride or die eyeliner. But I really wanted to do a lot of drugstore makeup, all drugstore if I could for this video so if you are just starting out and just learning how to do makeup or don't want to buy from sephora or high-end products then you have other options and so i tried a few from the drugstore and i came up with the nyx waterproof epic eyeliner epic ink liner and i'll show you the box this is what the box looks like in case you have any trouble finding it because I was looking at a few different ones and I got the wrong one a couple times. This is a really good waterproof pen. I'll show you. Yeah. And it is a good eyeliner, I think, to start with, especially if you want to learn how to do a wing. I would say start very light-handed, start with small strokes, and watch some eyeliner specific videos because I don't think I'm as good as some of the other people at doing winged eyeliner. I'm just going to try and do a little wing, but sometimes it gets out of control, so we'll see what happens. But 
this is what I'm gonna use today. So let's do that and I have to, <laughs> I'm blind. I have to pull up my mirror a little bit closer. So sorry, that's gonna be in the frame. Starting at the corner of my eye, I'm gonna draw a small line towards the end of my eyebrow. And I just take it very slow so that I can be more accurate and don't try and go for absolute perfection until you've done more of it. I find that I can correct little mistakes as I go. So practice makes perfect and it's not gonna be the end if you do a little smudge because you can fix it later. Just don't go too far out because you can't go back very easily once you get too big of a liner and then it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and it's just a mess, so don't do that. But, um, so I will, I just did that on that side. It doesn't look super pretty, but I'm gonna do it again on this side. Now that I've done them both, I can tell that they are not even, so I'm gonna go in and try and fix that. All right, that's good enough. And then I am going to draw a line across my eye and I'm going to go as close to the lash line as I can and you can build up from there. So starting almost at the inner corner, not quite, I will start on this right eye here. And I'm doing it in smaller strokes and not one big line just for myself. I will mess up and draw a huge line if I do it all in one big line. I do have to say the only thing I don't like about this NYX uh, liner is sometimes it bleeds a little bit so the line isn't crisp. But you can clean that up but it's just not the same as the tattoo eyeliner so if you'll, you're willing to spend a little bit more um, I would invest in the Kat Von D eyeliner. I'm not very good at this, <laughs> but um, practice makes perfect and you just keep just doing little strokes until you can make it look good. All right, so this is a chunky winged eyeliner. You don't have to do winged, you don't have to do chunky, you don't even have to do eyeliner. If you are just starting out with makeup, start with mascara. Honestly, I kind of wish I had never done the eyeliner look because now I don't feel like I look like myself without it. So. If you can start with just mascara and find a look you like with that, you could even do darker eyeshadow kind of as an eyeliner, then I would say go with that just for starting out. After eyeliner, I like to do mascara and before the mascara comes the scary eyelash curler tool. What you're gonna do is just curl your top lash and you're gonna bring it in on top of your eyelid, but make sure you don't aren't too close, otherwise you'll hit your eyelid and that hurts a lot so just be very gentle and then once you have just your top lashes close it and just do a few pulses so you can do the pulses just in the same spot or you can kind of go up through your eyelash for me I just do it at the very baseline of my eyelid or my lash line And then this is probably undoing the curl I just did, but I'll take a spoolie brush like this. This is from e.l.f. It was a buck. And I'll just run through my eyelashes with it just to make sure that they are all brushed out and ready for mascara. Same on the lower lashes. And now mascara. I love the Voluminous Lash Paradise from L'Oreal. I think it's very comparable to the Better Than Sex Mascara from Too Faced. That one's always gonna be really great, but this one's a really good one too. So starting at the base of my lashes, I'm gonna wiggle the brush and then brush it out. If you 
much your mascara do not touch it until it dries because I'm gonna show you how to easily fix it and not mess up your eyeshadow but if it is still wet there's no hope so just leave it as hard as it is to not just wipe it off trust me let it dry oh good I did smudge it I was afraid that I wasn't going to and then I wouldn't be able to show you this trick okay so I have smudges um, from my mascara I'm gonna take a q-tip and just lightly brush them away and magically the eyeshadow is still there all right we're almost done you still with me so let's do a setting spray to again make your makeup last as long as possible and I'm gonna pick the Milani makeup last setting spray and now I'm about to look ridiculous as I spray it on my face ready and I am going to do some lip liner what I like to use is the NYX lip liner and this one is in nude pink so I just put that on my lips before I do my lipstick And then for lipstick, I'm going to use Maybelline Nude Lust in 920, 920. It's just a very soft pink. I'm going to cover that. I really, really, really like lipsticks that you can put on without um, using a mirror. This one is so light that it doesn't, I don't have to worry about it smudging and I like red lipstick, but I hate the clean up and touch up and all that. I think red lipstick is just great for photos. And then when you need to go have lunch, use something that is very light and neutral. To finish everything off, I'm just going to use a little lip gloss. This is from Victoria's Secret. So here's the finished look. This is a good everyday look for someone who is just a beginner at makeup, or maybe you just like this style. Maybe it just suits me. I don't know, but I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found it at least a little bit helpful. And I will put in the cards my video that I did right before this that explains the products in depth a little bit more and has a few more suggestions. And I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.